So welcome back friends and as you guessed we are back inside the transit van. I have something to share with you today that probably very few of you have ever seen or even knew existed up until recently I didn't uh, and it's this. This, you know what this is? This is an S-bar. Uh, it is a, essentially it is a, it, this is a bit of a stretch, it's kind of like a tiny gas powered jet engine a small tiny jet jet or a, or a generator that produces hot water and what you can do with that hot water is many things of course you can heat your hot hot water uh, but you could also it's used as a furnace and this will be tying in with the existing fuel system in the van and it's so efficient i've been told that it, at running at medium capacity um, that it'll it will produce hot water um, it'll run for 10 hours on one gallon so ten, at 10 hours. So essentially it could heat your, it, it, running at 50% capacity, it could heat your van um, for 10 hours on one gallon. It's just incredible. So amazing. This is only part of it. So um, I'm going to show you, I've got the install. I've done all the heavy lifting so you don't have to sit through all of the drill press parts and all of that. We're going to put, put the system together and it, it, it will be, uh, it'll be easier to understand. So a quick overview so you can orient what's going on here. We've got, uh, the, of course, the back of the transit van and the completed bed rails. I got that all done in the upholstery. And so where I'm going to put the whole furnace, hot water here, the whole Rickson uh, system is going to be right here, right in front of the bed. So here are the two one inch bars that I had to mount. I had to drill these out um, at, so I can get the factory little deal. So these are the rails, that you, these aluminum deals are the rails that they use for airplane seats. So, and then here you can see this was the scrap piece of aluminum. It's just a piece of diamond plate I turned around backwards and you can see the back side of all the rib nuts. Those are essentially like pop rivets. And what that allows you to do is to, you don't have to, when you get into areas like working on van conversions and things, you, know, you cannot get a nut behind them, especially when, when you're going in the walls. But what I can do here, these are all stainless steel 5 16 cap screws. They thread into the rib nuts. And so I don't have to worry about holding anything on the back or getting to it or it's so, these are things are so nice. Instead of having a silly self tapper in there, which is not very good and they're not secure, it's going to come loose and give you problems in the future. Uh, you can do this and you know, do, do them pro properly here. So, the first component of the system that we're going to install this is one of two. Don't get confused yet, it'll all come clear when we install the furnace is the heat exchanger. This is a, the cleverest thing. So, what you have here is you have a series of copper plates. They use copper because copper is a great conductor of heat. And so as that super hot, super heated water comes out of the S-bar, it goes through this water jacket here. These two are connected and these two are connected. It goes through here and therefore heating the copper and that heat is shared across those copper plates into this side. So we have a closed loop system with an antifreeze in it that goes round and round and round, produces the heat, and we're just stealing a little bit off of this here to go. Th this particular one here is gonna go over to, to feed the sink. So when you turn on the sink, you're gonna have hot water via kind of osmosis across this. And so this is mounted with a small bracket like this. And this is a little, this little sensor will fit in there and this will hook to the, the thermostat or computer or whatever, it's going to tell the system when it needs to turn on, when it needs to continue to fire to keep that heat up. So let's install this now. Uh, on the This will be the first piece on our plate. Okay, so we'll mount the heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger will be held in place here by these 5 16 cap screws. It's so hard. I it's so hard to get to the to get everything. Everything is such a, a confined space in, in these conversions like this, and so it, it comes down to fractions of inches to make everything work. the The actual doing of the installation isn't that isn't that big of a deal. It's the uh, it's the thinking about it and, and, and making you know making everything fit. I want it to be. I don't want to have a bunch of weight in here, and I don't want to have a bunch of bulk. I mean, everything space comes down to a, a premium, so uh, you've got to make sure everything's well thought out. So I, this is as compact as I could possibly figure out to make it. Now, when you're mounting your uh, heat exchangers, um, the guys at Rickson told me make sure you mount them up and down this way. That way, if you when you drain them in the winter time. 
and I'll be adding washers to these two. I just don't have them presently. Uh, when you when you drain it, that way there's no water sitting in the heat exchanger or it could freeze. So this is the next component. Now this is the portion that's going to be blowing the heat out or, or producing the heat for inside uh, the cab. So what's going to be really nice is like, uh, for example, when we go skiing um, and the van is going to be parked and it's 18 degrees or so, we can turn on the thermostat on the S-bar and it will continue to run. It'll just, just sip a little tiny bit of, of fuel out of the existing gas tank and keep the inside of the van at whatever temperature we want. So if we come in for lunch or want to come in or just to get warm, it's always going to be warm. There's not going to be any ice on anything. It's just it's, it's an amazing, amazing system. Um, not only that is that having huge, the space that we have in this van is what we found now that it's been really cold. It's been down like to 17 degrees this week, um, is that the heater up in the cab is, is not enough for, for the whole uh, vehicle and that um, the people that are riding in the back are cold. So this the, this is going to be blowing right up to the front from the back. So heat coming, heat coming from the front, heat coming from the back is going to make the whole experience a lot more comfortable. But this is essentially the same thing that's in your car. We've got a mini radiator and we're going to have the hot water from the S-bar that's going to be running in here through all of that. It's got a tremendous amount of surface area and then an electric fan that's going to be blowing across there. And this will be able to run at multiple speeds, so it's a super efficient, quiet fan, and that will just be that's just the way your car works. It's just blowing air across those heated, uh, that heated heat exchanger. So let's install this piece next. Now this bit will mount just right down here, right alongside. I had to keep everything, this whole system, uh, inside a, the 16-inch width. Um, and I think it's going to be just work out just great. So again, these are held in with the quarter inch, quarter 20 uh, cap, stainless steel cap screws. And you can see now the benefit. If I had to try, I, I wouldn't be able to hold a, a nut to the back side of this uh, if I when I wanted to tighten these because of the, the way it's designed. So being, I can, I can uh, use those rib nuts. In there I don't have to get to the back side of it it's so much easier especially on these conversions when you're you're putting on taking up putting on and taking off all the time um, because it's kind of you know all of the trial and error um, to make that a little bit simpler is really really helpful the next component of the hydronic furnace is the expansion tank this is this is beautifully made Aluminum, welded aluminum, two gallon canister that's going to give you, this is basically your hot water tank. And then your, your hot coming in, in and out. Uh, but there, it does more than that. So if you know how a hot water heater works, see there's, there's three, there's gonna be three ways to heat to run this furnace system. And it's using the en engine coolant, using the uh, hot water from the S-bar unit, the, the little gas generator, and using an electrical element if you have shore power. Let's say you're visiting or you're at a campsite and you've got a plug-in. What this has is just like your hot water heater, it's got an element that goes inside here and you can see that that's kind of piggybacked on the uh, on the end of the expansion tank. There is a hot water element that goes in there and by plugging in, plug in you could just use your regular 120 or 110 power, 115, um, and then run the system that way as well. So it's so super versatile uh, to be able to have that on there and to heat with a cord too so you're not running your gas. So let's install this. Uh, this one goes up on top. So the expansion tank is also going to be mounted with the uh, stainless steel quarter 20s, the cap, the cap screws. It just really fit, worked out so good. All this will be, uh, it'll be, uh, it's gotta be, uh, one thing that's gotta be accessible is your cap uh, because this will have a glycol antifreeze mix in there that'll, that you'll wanna trade out every, you know, five years or so ago. And there's a, also a drain there. This, I mean, this, the system is very similar to, to like what your car is in many ways. It's a completely independent standalone furnace. The next component is this beautifully designed German built uh, transfer pump and this is the little pump that's going to circulate all of the water in the system and that uh, mounts directly to the expansion tank. So let's I'll put that in I'll show you how that goes on.
Now this little pump is going to mount directly to the tank. and It came with its own little rubber mount to isolate it because these things will vibrate. And you know, your van is all metal and everything aluminum, you know, everything connected. And it, you get a lot of vibration and noise through that. And what the guys at Rickson said is that they've had better luck by throwing that mount away and not using that mount, but just mounting it directly to the tank. Now, I'm, I'm going against what they told me here uh, just because I just don't have the space. The best way to mount this is is to mount it directly in the center of your tank. That way, if you're trying to diagnose a problem or something, you want to make sure that you have flow. If your pump is running, that you can simply pop the cap off and see if it's circulating. I'm, unfortunately, I just don't have uh, the space for it because of the way I designed this. It's just too tight. So I'm going to mount it over here. But being that it's going to be super accessible, um, I don't think I'll have a problem. But mounting it just directly to the rubber... Uh, like like we have going on here and this is all just temporary of course now it's going to be isolated and it can if it vibrates or shakes it's going to have rubber on both sides and it's so lightweight and this is heavy duty hose with the big clamps on it it's not going to be a problem it's pretty rigid just like that so this is the way the pump is going to mount and by mounting it directly underneath the tank then we don't ever have to worry about having a bubble or an airlock or anything like that or cavitation because there's always going to be water pressing upon the pump so this is the best place to put it just like that so I made up a couple of the hoses to start connecting everything and it was really nice that they included these 90 degree uh, hoses that I could cut and kind of adapt with, with all the fittings in here so this I'll do we'll cover a lot more of this in the future when we hook it all up final and I may not have everything right but I think I think I do if not it'll be easy to change so I just worked these up here I'm not gonna clamp anything yet I'm going to make sure I take some pictures and I'll send it to the, <laughs> to the guys at Rick's and the, make sure I got it all hooked up right. But uh, they did a pretty good job of explaining it to me. And um, there is the basic install for the inside. And I could not be happier with the way it turned out. So I think a guy would be hard pressed to install this whole system in a smaller footprint than this. This aluminum plate that the whole system sitting on here is 16 by 22 inches now the only thing that's really overhanging of course is the electrical box there but as far as the footprint of the system that you can install it inside that I mean, that's super super tiny so we can build a, a cabinet around here and then we're going to have uh, we'll have that nice sink combination sink uh, cooker uh, right up there and then the hot water coming right up out of there uh, really nice it's going to be uh, the fan is going to be blowing everything right underneath of the the passenger seats and it's just fabulous it's absolutely fabulous all of this stuff from this system is just top of the line i mean german german built uh, american built you know all this stuff all hand welded this is not your typical um rv style you know propane low-end type of um a furnace this is a furnace that's that's super super high quality made to last a long time i'll tell you what if i had sold my van this would come out with me uh, i would i would take it with me and put it in the next one and and the nice way uh, the way i've got it mounted here is that if you know you never really know how the design of things is going to work and if i needed to move this up bump it up you know an extra inch or two or two or three inches i can do that with these rails here yeah i'd have to cut and extend the lines a little bit but it's doable uh so it just gives you those little sometimes those little options are really nice so um this the next part we will mount the the s bar unit it's going to mount underneath because it, it's essentially a gas powered generator check out the little exhaust <laughs> little muffler right there so this will uh, there'll be two the penetrations here through the floor this will mount just underneath where we can't see it here um, and then the hoses will come up through the floor and then we'll circulate the whole hot water system but that's a look at that that's the the little teeny tiny fuel intake on there uh, but that's the system. It turned out great, and um, uh, we'll be installing the lithium battery. I got a 200 amp hour lithium battery that is so small it's going to mount underneath the passenger seat. Uh, so we'll have to build that bracket, and then uh, oh, just so many, so many exciting things to do. This is a really a fun, fun project. So uh, if you want to, if you're interested in, in one of these, if you want to uh, inquire about putting this sort of a system in a van or RV or, or anything. Um, Rickson Enterprises, they're a local San, uh, Oregon company in Sandy. Uh, great, great guys. Um, and I'll put a link to their website 
um, in the subject heading below um, so they can answer any questions that you have. Um, all right. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you over on the next part.